I will try Amos chapter 6. Don't know all the Bible. Never will. Woe to them. I understand that. Woe. Warning. Pay attention. Wake up. That are at ease in Zion. Sit back. Entertainment centers. Video game playing. Going to the movies. Sitting down. Having a good time. And trust in the mountain of Samaria. You find that in John chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. When that woman at the aren't you say you worship in this mountain, but we say worship in this mountain? Jesus rebukes her, say, Thou shalt not say worship in this mountain or that mountain. Jesus quoted. Amos 6 1 to that woman, which are named. Well, they didn't per quote per se, but this Amos says, Woe to you that go to Samaria Mountain. This is north of Israel again. Where was he? He was north, a woman of Samaria. And we go to our mountain, you go to your mountain, I go to my church. Oh, I got my church, I got my favorite pastor. Well, my favorite pastor is on a CD. Blah, 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 blah. Which are named chief of the nations. To whom the house of Israel came. Pass ye unto Cana, whatever. Uh, references Isaiah 10, 9. And see, and from thence go ye to Hamath. The great. So it must be a Hamath. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Enemy of God. Always been an enemy of God. Be they, be they better than these kingdoms? Or their borders greater than your borders? What are these nations? What are they? Are they any better than you? Aren't they supposed to be God's people? Aren't they supposed to be better than... Aren't they supposed to be more light? Aren't they supposed to be the, the city that sits on the hill that's a light? Aren't they supposed to be the salt? And yet tomorrow they'll be all having Easter services. Easter dresses. Easter eggs. You're just like the heathen. You're no better. You're supposed to get rid of that junk. You're not supposed to be part of paganism. But look what you're doing. You're worshiping in the mountain. Druids, get to God by mountain climbing. Go to that guru on top of the mountain. Take your pilgrimage. All that worship. God says, you're no better. It's a heathen practice. I'm against it, God says. How's that? Ye that put far away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near. That lie on beds of ivory. Ooh. We got houses of ivory in the Bible. We got beds of ivory in the Bible. And stretch themselves upon their couches. And eat the lambs out of the flocks. And the calves out of the midst of the stall. Lamb chops. Hamburgers. They're living on high in the hog. But I guess you can't say that for a Jew. Man, they got great houses. They got expensive beds. They're eating the best food. They got rid of the evil day, but they caused a seat of violence. Violence is coming. Violence is near. That chant to the sound of the vial. And we read that in uh, chapter 5, verse 23. God says, knock it off. I'm sick of it. I don't want to hear it. You want to know this modern church music? They chant to the sound of the vial and invent to themselves instruments of music like David. You know how many musical instruments we have today that were not when David was around? And David would make instruments God's telling us for God. David would say, well, let me try this. That sounds holy and right. Keep it. What's that? Wow, man, get rid of that. that that's, that's unholy. 
Burn it. Destroy it. Haven't you read the Psalms of David, how much he loved God? You think David would have an instrument that would profane God? David made holy instruments to play for God. They drink wine in bowls. Now, can you just picture here a, one of those big old fruit punch bowls? You know, you, you had the label. Can you just imagine just picking that thing up and drinking it? When I grew up as, as a kid, it was, you know, my mother and other mothers, when the kids were at the, the yard, they had these big bowls. And we come in, we get juice out of it. Can you imagine that one kid would come in and would pick the whole thing up and start glumping it? You know how messy that would be also? Dripping down on you? And anoint themselves with the chief ointments. I can name some proper uh, ointments and perfumes and, and other stuff, but I'm not going to give them the time or the money. But they got the best. Look how I smell. Look how I look. Oh, makeup. Oh, I didn't say that, did I? But they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. See, they put the evil day away. It ain't going to happen to us. We preach at the farmer's market. The guy's a liar. It's not going to happen. We're okay. My priest says it's okay. As long as I take care of him, everything will be okay. Somebody will pray me out of purgatory. That guy's lying. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The Bible's full. It ain't going to happen. I'm going to go and have the all-I-can-eat buffet, and I'm going to listen to the music. I'm going to have a good old time. I'm going to have me the best of the food. I'm going to lay on my nice craftmatic bed or whatever it is. I'm just going to drink and drink and drink and drink till I puke it out. Who cares about the Bible? Who cares about people in hell? Hell is not real. They don't even think about it. Sound familiar? Doesn't the Bible come up to place today? I preached at the farmer's market today, the fear of God. You know how many people came up to show their fear of God? Zilch. Not a one. 25? I'd say no more. There was no one more than 100 people there, if you were lucky. Not one come up and say, you know what? I fear God. I want to do right. Whether I was saved or lost, I want to fear God. No one came up. And I called them out on it. I told them, you have no fear of God. There's no fear of God here. Amos has been preaching. Joel has been preaching. Israel has had prophets after prophets after prophets, and no one cared. You know what's a shame? Jonah preached to these people that will come into the land and destroy, and they got right. You know what's a shame? Gentiles will believe the Jewish Messiah over a Jewish person in 2016. You know what God says about his people? Though he loves them, they're, they're stiff-necked, they're hard-hearted. They're not going to listen. And so are people today. They're not going to listen. But did Amos stop? Did he conclude chapter 5? All right, they're not going to listen. No, he went on to chapter 6. Therefore now shall they go, wait, now they shall go captive with the first that go captive. And the banquet of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. You're going to go in captivity. How more can God explain it to him through Amos? An enemy's coming. Your party is done. Uh, you're a liar, Amos. Knock on someone's door. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't, you're just as worse as Jehovah's Witnesses. Get off my doorstep. Liar. You know when Paul persecuted a Christian, Jesus Christ took that personally? When somebody calls you a loud mouth, someone calls you a liar, someone says that what you're preaching is a lie, and all the other things. They're not doing it to you. They're doing it to God. God takes that personally. And it gets him even angrier. So he tells him. 
captivity is coming. Judgment is coming. The Lord God has sworn by himself. I've said over and over, God walks in the courtroom. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me me. No one can say that. Imagine if, if a human walked in the courtroom. He lays his hand on the Bible. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? But let's for the sake of what they used to do. You, they put their hand about the and they, they give you the oath. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And that guy says, so help me me. What do you think the credibility of that guy is going to be in the courtroom? Let's say 25, 50, 100 years ago. They wouldn't even give him the time of day. Matter of fact, they may even lock him up. God stands up and says, by me. Say it, Lord God of hosts. I abhor the excellency of Jacob. You read these six chapters? The music, the religion, and God says, I hate it. You know what a new name for the word occult would be? God hates it. And you put that quote on churches. Including Baptist churches. Where what they're doing, God says, I abhor it. I hate it. It's abomination. The excellency of Jacob. Look at that. What you think you are the best, you're standing. God says, I abhor it. And hate the palaces. Ooh. You know what the high priest had when Jesus was walking this earth? He had a palace. Riches. Castles. Drinking wine out of bowls. The best meat. Therefore will I deliver up the city, Samaria, with all that is therein. Everything. Animals. People. That's utter destruction. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That shall should be just as much as thou shalt not. But with man, okay, I can do it. With God, it's going to happen. If there remain ten men in one house, that they shall die. How do you like that? The remnant is killed in Israel. Ten people that remain, I'm going to kill them. You know how many people God's going to take care of in the great white throne judgment? All that have not believed on him. There'll be no Christians there because they're in the judgment seat of Christ. God will deal with each and every one of them. And a man's uncle. Now a man's uncle would be, he's not living in your house. He's got another house. So we're talking about, we come to pass, there remain ten men in the house, that they shall die. Now here's somebody from another house. It's got to step in. There's nobody left in the house of verse 9 shall take him up and he that burneth him so here's a guy who's got to step in the house and do the funeral service burning they usually buried their dead here they're burning to bring out a, the bones out of the house Flesh and bones. All the body. And shall say unto him that is by the sides of the house. Neighbors. Is there yet any with thee? Anybody living with you? The Bible speaks about in the, in the prophets. There's coming a time when there's going to be a shortage of men. 
this is going to be happening in Israel shortly. But when you come to the tribulation period in those times, there's a shortage of men coming. Anybody that live? Is there yet any with thee? And he shall say, no. The one by the side of the house, the neighbor, no. Then shall he say, I don't know if this is the, the uncle or the, the neighbor, hold thy tongue, shut up. Don't speak a word. Shut up. For we may not make mention of the name of the Lord. Is it too late to be seeking God? Don't even mention God in the funeral service. Don't even mention God. For behold, the Lord commandeth, and he will smite the great house with breaches, holes, cracks. The ivory houses, the, the, the palace houses, and the little house with clefts. You know, the little houses, the rich and the poor, God is going to destroy. Going to be nothing left, he's already told us. That he's telling us again, twice, there's going to be nothing left. He said, verse 8. Therefore will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. All that is therein, both the great houses and the little houses. All that therein is gone. Going to be bye-bye. Shall horses run upon the rock? I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if, anything about horses. I don't know if they can run upon a rock. I don't know what the question is here about. Will one plow there? Will one plow there with oxen? You know, what oxen are a type of in the Bible. Prophets and preachers. Will there be somebody that will speak up for God? Plow the fields, plant the seeds. All sound familiar? For ye have turned judgment into gall. That's a bitter drink. They gave gall to Jesus on the cross. The fruit of righteousness. Maybe the one that plows. Something to do with that horse. Here's one that is right. Into hemlock. Poison. They poison the preacher. They poison the message. They poison Amos's message. If, if I read that correctly, and I can be wrong. But hemlock is a poison. Ye which rejoice in a thing of naught. You know what Americans worship and enjoy and favor themselves in? Nothing. What's it all worth? What's all your money put to? Nothing. You can't take it with you to the graveyard. And if you can, you can't take it with you with your soul. All the pharaohs took all their treasures and buried it with them. They are not enjoying them. The museums of the world and the grave robbers are enjoying them. And when the grave robbers are dead, they're not going to enjoy the treasures of Pharaoh. Somebody else is. That big baseball team, that big football team, that big uh, fishing, that big race car, that big movie, that big actress, whatever it is. In the eyes of God, it's nothing. Which say, have we not taken to us horns? By our own strength. Horns are strength in the Bible. Can we do it ourselves? Isn't it by our strength? Our gusto. After you're defeated. After you've been turned into captivity. What got you out of it? You know you can have a tank. Core. 
and tanks don't work very well in wintry weather with snow. You can have yourself a whole cavalry of horses and horsemen. And if you ain't got the food, you don't have an army. What it's saying here is you better have God. But, behold, I, God, will raise up against you a nation. This whole chapter is about you're going bye-bye. See you later. We preach that in the streets. We, we preach that in people's doors. Hell's coming. O house of Israel, save the Lord God of hosts. They shall the sit the nation shall flip you from the entering in Hemoth unto the river of the wilderness. From probably east or west or north to south. What it's saying there, I do know. Your entire land will be attacked by this nation, and they're going to afflict you, and you're going into captivity. God said, I swear by myself, that's going to happen. And it does. Just as God said. Amos warned them. But they did not hear. 